And I, I just asked myself, you know, do I still believe all the things that I believed when I started the channel? Um, what have I seen that has changed my mind? You know, what, what have I learned? Um, and it's actually more difficult to answer that question than I thought. Um, I certainly think that I've learned some things. I would hope so. Uh, and I think partly to the credit of ayahuasca and some of these other systems that are connected to, you know, my general practice, um, I, I haven't really changed my mind that much. Um, maybe there's a little bit of naivety and maybe a little bit of overconfidence in the spectrum of things that the um, medicine can do uh, and maybe also the consistency. Um, and I, I definitely learned that I had some misconceptions in terms of just even the general effects. So um, I guess the first thing we can start with is, you know, the I get asked a lot about Lyme's disease. There are a lot of rumors that ayahuasca can fix Lyme's disease. And I can't say that it doesn't. Um, I may or may not have it. Uh, I did get bitten by a tick when I was young, and I've had, like, symptoms maybe I – I don't know, chronic fatigue my whole life and maybe some periods where uh, my brain didn't seem to work as well as it should and some other, you know, the, like soft tissue degeneration and stuff. Um, but it's very difficult to get a correct test for Lyme's disease and the panels are very expensive, panel test, whatever it's called. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a strong possibility. And just anecdotally, you know, from uh, Lyme patients uh, that I've known, uh, you know, they, they generally tend to express some relief. And in my case, I definitely feel better in general after I take it any time. So it is true, it seems, that it's an immunomodulator. And it's definitely very anti-inflammatory. And if you make it the way that I do with a whole bunch of other uh, anti-inflammatory plants, or, you know, at our retreats, I serve it... Um, it it's supported by teas that have a lot of anti-inflammatory... Um, and, you know, other plants that uh, are beneficial for that kind of application. Um, and another interesting aspect of that, uh, it, from one experience that I had, um, where, you know, I hadn't been feeling very well, and um, I, I drank a, a rather large dose of ayahuasca, and... I was complaining that the visions that I was having weren't really very coherent. And um, I asked to be shown something I could use. And I got a whole bunch of weird stuff. And then finally, okay, how about this? And I could see into my stomach all of a sudden. And there's all these little yellow bugs moving around. And I don't know that they were Bugdorfsi or, uh, you know, whatever the, the spirochete, Lyme spirochete and the co-infections are. Um, but it was something, and uh, the, the Pachamama said, you know, that time you were lost in, in the mountains in California and you drank from the stream, um, I was lost for four days and, and four nights or something uh, in the mountains and right next to the highway the whole time. But uh, um, she said, you know, this is bad enough that it could kill you. And I, I can flush the parasites, but I cannot kill the eggs. Um, and she offered to show me a plant in the jungle uh, that would kill the um, eggs and interestingly uh, you know I found out as I started studying more that that's actually one way that the shaman will find cures for um, you know snake bite or whatever they'll go out drink the ayahuasca go out in the jungle and actually just look at the plants and the one that turns into the head of a dos equis or whatever snake it is in particular that bit the person or whatever it is malaria whatever um, there'll be some kind of visual cue uh, in the form of a apparent hallucination from the plant that tells them what to use. Um, but I did not take the advice that night. I was kind of new to ayahuasca, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going out into the jungle in the middle of the night eating some plant because a voice in my head told me to. You know, I didn't have the confidence yet. I wish that I had at least gone and collected it and I'd eat it later. The point is, though, that if you have that type of condition or anything similar, uh, I think that's probably true, that flushing your system the way that ayahuasca does is going to be beneficial. And then the anti-inflammatory components of it are going to be beneficial. And the neuroplasticity and neurogenesis and the balancing of the um, uh, dopamine and um, 
serotonin are also going to be helpful uh, because you're suffering from depression. Anyone that has chronic illness is suffering from depression to an extent. Your memory is going to be improved. And any time that your memory is improved, you're more cognizant, you're more confident, and therefore your quality of life improves. So, um, no, I'm not, I'm not high. Uh, not high at all. Um, now, now I'm acting like it though because you <laughs> you tripped me up with that. Um, what was I saying though? Um, yeah, so you know it's it's I, it's difficult to say for sure whether ayahuasca is really consistently and um, you know effectively a cure for any physical illness. But I have heard lots of anecdotal reports of people with cancers experiencing remission and people with Lyme's disease experiencing remission. Uh, I had a um, Di not diabetic, um, you know, you have seizures. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I can't recall. It's a really common thing. Um, guy suffered from epileptic. <laughs> uh, he had really bad epilepsy. In fact, when he landed in Quito, he uh, had two seizures in the first 24 hours, and he was still taking his medication. I told him not to do this because just covering my ass, um, you know, as a disclaimer, uh, but he chose to discontinue his medication on the spot when he arrived at the retreat, uh, which should cause, you know, the withdrawal symptoms would be a bunch of seizures. And if you bear in mind that he had two in 24 hours when he arrived here while still on the medication, the fact that as soon as I started giving him my plant medicine tea, he did not have another seizure. And as far as I know, uh, we're like four months out. He still hasn't had another seizure. Uh, so... You know, we do have these anecdotal reports. Uh, there is a video uh, where I interviewed him on the channel. If you're interested, you can find that. Uh, I think the title is Can Ayahuasca Cure Epilepsy? But And it's also important to note that I didn't just give him ayahuasca. There was also um, Ajo de Monte, which is uh, an indigenous cure for epilepsy, um, along with other things. All kinds of, um, you know, things that treat neuropathy and uh, just generally help restore the condition of the brain. I mean, when you have seizures a lot, you get a little bit of brain damage or even a lot of brain damage, depending on the severity and the frequency and the type of seizures that you have. And so uh, the ability of psilocybin, for example, to rapidly uh, rebuild neural pathways and to even regenerate damaged brain cells is, you know, extremely relevant um, to anyone that has any kind of head injury or you know, any kind of nerve damage of any kind. Um, so, you know, so that's basically that, you know, as far as like physical illnesses go, I have definitely seen uh, in chronic illness of all types, there's at least an improvement, you know, whether whether it's a cure or not, uh, there's varying reports. Um, but for certain, anyone with chronic illness, um, most, you know, debilitating or partially debilitating chronic illnesses will find some degree of improvement of life uh, from ayahuasca. Um, by the way, you guys, hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon to join our secret streams. And uh, there's also options to support in the chat. Uh, we're demonetized. So all of our support comes from the community, and we definitely appreciate it. Uh, what else was I going to say about this? Um, Oh, well, you know, and then there's the spiritual development. Uh, ayahuasca has quite the reputation for elevating people's consciousness. Uh, unfortunately, my experience of that is that it's a mixed bag. Um, it depends on what exactly you mean, the specificities of what it means to elevate your consciousness. Um, if you're talking about alleviating depression, if you're talking about gaining insights into uh, you know, dark recesses of the mind where you've been unable to shine the light or unwilling to look, um, that is pretty consistent. I mean, in terms of general improvement of personality disorders, uh, across the board, in almost every case of every person I've ever seen, there's one notable instance I can think of, of a person that I don't think ayahuasca did them any good. I don't know that it was necessarily harm, um, you know, but... Uh, over, overwhelmingly, uh, everyone reports, you know, changed life and, um, you know, just general improvement in depression and interest in the mysteries of life and the intricacies of nature. What's going on, Jason? 
Um, I still see seven viewers and only two likes, man. Um, uh, so, but here's the thing. Uh, things get very complicated when we're talking about neurological, emotional, and psychological disorders, right? So uh, it's definitely not one size fits all. It's not um, ever a guarantee. People ask me a lot of time if narcissistic personality disorder can be addressed with uh, ayahuasca. And that is one of the trickiest ones. You know, can a psychopath uh, feel empathy after um, ayahuasca? Uh, actually, interestingly, I have a story about that that implies that all psychedelics have the potential to um, restore or, uh, I guess, to bring apathy to a person who has psychopathy. There was a kid that I went to high school with um, that had some chemical problems in his brain. I mean, he did crazy stuff. He shot some people in the legs and kneecapped him at the gas station and spent half of his juvenile life in jail and all stabbed somebody, all kinds of stuff. And they said that he didn't feel fear. His parents said that, and that's what was um, wrong with him. No fear and no empathy. So it was maybe his psychopathy and something else, you know, fear. I don't know if he didn't have adrenaline glands or, you know, what, how exactly that would happen and why they would know that. <clears throat> But that was the story. And one time we ate acid with him. And he suddenly jumps up and he looked scared shitless. And I saw his face and I was like, what the hell? And then he just started laughing and he was so happy. <clears throat> I was like, what happened? And he's like, I was scared for a second. So, um, you know, I don't know if that was uh, necessarily empathy. Um, but it definitely was an experience of some emotional, um, you know, capacity that the person did not have prior to that psychedelic experience and then back to the narcissism question uh there is a spectrum of narcissism there are different varieties of narcissism so you know if you have someone that is all the way fully extended you know the ne needle is buried in the narcissist uh spectrum of narcissistic personality disorder um chances that they're going to uh be cured pretty slim but improved? Possibly. Uh, you know, that's um, very, very murky and individualistic territory. You know, people are going to respond differently. Uh, and I definitely have noticed that people that have uh, narcissism generally tend to have very difficult experiences. That's another thing to take into consideration that, you know, the more serious your traumas are, the more serious your issues are, and the more invested you are, into these shadow aspects of yourself that do not serve you. Um, but if you identify with them, you're going to struggle to let go of them, um, clinging to them um, to the last breath in some cases, uh, even resorting to um, self-harm uh, or attempts at self-harm uh, to try to do anything they can to distract themselves from the message of the medicine. Um, addiction. Uh, ayahuasca is definitely exactly as um, effective at addiction as people say it is. Um, it definitely, uh, porn addictions, you know, that seems to be an extremely prevalent thing with especially males uh, from the Zoomer demographic. Uh, I That's just super common, um, maybe even universal. And it is definitely alleviated. And the thing about addiction, there's two things. Uh, at the root of it is trauma, uh, almost 100% of the time. And the reality is if, if the trauma is addressed and properly, um, you know, dealt with and integrated, um, the, there's a good chance that the addiction is going to uh, resolve. And that is something I see with a lot of consistency. But there's another aspect of it that if you have a very empty and vapid existence, uh, which is the case with a lot of people in this dominator culture that we're all uh, sort of trapped in, right? There's, you know, this crisis of purpose that is uh, very pervasive. And in my opinion, the single most destructive uh, force, uh, cultural force uh, that we are contending with. Uh, in the modern era, and um, these addictions are a way to fill that void, and I know this is kind of trite and almost doesn't really bear saying, but the context that makes this valuable is that um, 
psychedelics help us to connect with the mystery and to regain our fascination and to regain our motivation and to discover our in- inspiration. Um, and so that is uh, quite the remedy um, for these addictions. Um, so that one I would have to check off as having met or exceeded expectations. Um, in general, you know, over the last, I guess, 10 years or so, in most of the categories that ayahuasca is touted as beneficial, it either met or exceeded um, expectations. Uh, there is one element of this, though, that, you know, this is the big caveat when it comes to psychological and emotional um, reengineering. Uh, <coughs> metaprogramming um oftentimes ego inflation is um catalyzed by ayahuasca and dmt uh dmt even more so i think because it doesn't have that uh feminine um you know purging uh, communicative you know dmt is like being shot out of a hyperdimensional cannon and there's not a lot of time to process and oftentimes it's just you know, like super, super weird and crazy and mind blowing. And then it's just over and you're like, huh, what, what was the point of that? Right. So ayahuasca has this more, um, interactive, uh, kind of, you know, state or experience that it brings that I think really helps to, um, engage a person and you know but it still does that i've noticed that there are a tremendous number of ayahuasqueros that uh have a surprising amount of ego and will even say things oftentimes in the circles even when they're generally very good and helpful uh i've just noticed that you know in the acid culture even in california or among psilocybin users and stuff it actually seems like those compounds are, especially psilocybin, seem to be better at humbling people. Uh, ayahuasca seems to have the potential. Um, I'm not sure if that's happening, Third Eye, anymore. Um, I talked about that a little bit in the last live stream, but we'll see. If, if, if I do, it'll be in November. Um, where was that? damn chat (laughs) Uh, oh the ego thing ego inflation um yeah i've seen some pretty crazy things with ego inflation post ayahuasca uh and this is again another one of the problems with the new age influence um new age spirituality gives people the belief that they can just access higher realms of spiritual knowledge and understanding through things like channeling without any preparation any training any initiation any guidance nothing at all just, you know, you're special, so now you can just know stuff. And also practices like paying people for past life regressions. Um, you cannot buy spiritual knowledge. And if you do, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't have it if you can't get it yourself. Um, that's, you know, a rule of mystery tradition uh, that I think is absolutely valid. And I don't see how anyone doesn't know that. Um, you know, there's value is commensurate with effort. Um and, you know, knowledge that is, is, is procured in that kind of way is, you know, first of all, you have to be suspicious of your source because who is that advanced of a practitioner that doesn't know better than to do that? Um, and then, you know, and then who is, t- who's testing them? Who, who, <laughs> how do you check this? You know, when I also, when I, a lot of times when I see certified energy healer, it's like certified by what process? I mean, who has the standard? What are you measuring? Like, what is, what is that? You know, and I'm not saying energy healing is never real. I'm just saying that that's like, it's just, what is that? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the new age influence and the kind of ideas that it gives to people definitely uh, exacerbate this potential for psychedelics to cause ego inflation. And so I think context is super important that people have, you know, other mechanisms of mediation in their uh, practice and in their lives uh, that, you know, ayahuasca is not just consumed and then you just go back to your normal life. Uh, you know, people talk about the importance of integration um, and it's definitely not something that can be undervalued. Uh, and then preparation is also uh, kind of a neglected, you know, people talk about the dieta a lot and some of the bi- behavioral changes that you need to make. 
but I think that you know if you're really going to optimize the uh, the benefits and minimize uh, potential for harm from ayahuasca, then you know preparation is as important as integration and really framing um, the intention and uh, priming a person to receive um, a new meta programming is absolutely uh, essential. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll even share with you guys a story of, you know, one of the instances of ayahuasca blowing somebody's ego out of proportion and it turned out so badly. <laughs> Uh, this guy um, in Northern California, I don't know his name, I shouldn't say it even if I know it, I guess, but he was passing out pamphlets somewhere in Northern California, and we got one, and we thought, well, let's, this sounds interesting, let's go listen to this guy talk. So we go over there, and there's a bunch of cars, and there's this guy in, like, all white cotton clothes, and I knew instantly, okay, this is probably problematic. And um, he's basically trying to tell everybody, I have this free information for you, you can become a sovereign citizen, that whole thing, you don't have to stop at a stop sign, you don't need to put tags on your car, and I can show you where it is in the law that you need to look in order to free yourself from any kind of prosecution legally for anything, and of course, immediately, I'm thinking, okay, this is just dumb, and then he wants a thousand dollars, you know, it was free five minutes ago, uh, and it just, just went on and on and on and on and on, and at one point, I said, so, um, you know, if this something, he said something crazy and I was like, all right, if that's true, then you're the most perfect guy in the world. And he said, well, I wouldn't dispute that fact. And he, and then he starts saying, well, I'm out there on ayahuasca and I'm all, mm, and, oh, oh, and I'm like, what are you, what though? What is it? And he couldn't answer me. And I looked around at all the people staring at him all doe eyed. And I said, you guys are all eating his shit up. Remember those words because he fed them his own shit two days later. I don't know if it's because I said that and gave him the idea, in which case, I mean, I sort of feel bad because, you know, but yeah. Um, the bullet point of that presentation is that, yes, ayahuasca, you know, generally does improve the character uh, and disposition of people and the quality of their lives. But in some cases, it definitely can cause um, massive ego inflation. And that isn't necessarily the wrong thing for a person. Sometimes what needs to happen is that your head needs to be expanded to the point that it explodes and you make a fool of yourself at best and hopefully eventually pull yourself out of it and learn from it. Um, so even in the case where that ego expansion gets out of control, it may actually in the end serve the person. So, um, you know, jury's still out. Uh, it seems like every um, most psychological processes have some sort of in game that actually makes sense um but of course it doesn't always work out for the best yeah of course always smashing the like button always always sending something to paypal and zell and the cryptocurrency address we do appreciate your support since we're demonetized uh, we do still have two rooms open and space for four people at the uh october retreat um so if you send me an email, if you're interested in that, uh, we can do a Zoom call to check your compatibility. Um, we do have a screening process. It allows me to engineer the groups so that everyone is, you know, well suited to be in our circles. I'm assuming that WTF is in reference to... Uh, to that story I told about the ayahuasca arrow. And you know, that's an extreme one, but I mean, you guys just have to really pay attention and look for the inconsistencies uh, in the stories and perceptions that people have. Like people will say, you know, well, if you are a wicked person and you use ayahuasca, you're going to suffer. No, you're not. No, you're not necessarily. There are literally, you know, like, I don't even know, I don't want to call them bad shaman. There are guys in Brazil, I can't remember the name of this one church, but the dude is a monster, and it's been going on for like 25 years. You know what I mean? And he's rich and fine, I mean, by his standards. You know what I mean? So um, there's definitely things like that that I've noticed are uh, pretty ubiquitous perceptions, and they actually allow predators to hide and um, go unnoticed. Uh, you know, people, and to their credit, I think, have a tendency to try to think the best of, of people and to accept on face value their mannerisms and their uh, politess as, um, as legitimate representation. Uh, but in, you know, many, if not most cases, uh, it's obviously much more complicated than that in the end. 
By the way, if you guys have any questions or anything you want me to talk about, I don't have a ton more time, but I'm definitely happy to, um, you know, discuss whatever it is that's on your minds. Um, yeah, and so, you know, another thing that I would advise, I guess, is that if you are uh, serious about elevating your consciousness using ayahuasca or any other psychedelics, learning the, the basics of, you know, ritual magic in the hermetic tradition or the Western occult tradition will serve you um, in tremendously beneficial ways. Uh, and you don't necessarily need to believe in any kind of energetic basis uh, for this stuff to work for you. The Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, for example, it works wonders uh, just as a very sophisticated meditation routine um, and definitely helps you to maintain your sense of purpose and your clarity of purpose uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I, I offer instruction and all those things. I do consult, too, if you guys need any help with um, trying to find the proper combination of plant medicines um, or you're interested in ritual magic or any of these things, um, you can always shoot me an email, join our Patreon. Um, I'm going to start doing, uh, for the $10 tearing up to 15 minutes, um, maybe a month or maybe too many people, if, if people want it, uh, for me to do them all in a month. Um, but, yeah, I can probably do, yeah, $10 and up, 15 minute, plus you get access to the secret streams and all the old secret streams, so adding that in there um, just in case you know it can be of some service to people and helping them um, navigate their territory and developing a flow state macro lifestyle uh, which is highly advisable I think I know it is you know basically the idea is that what you want to do is put flow state triggers in your um, macrocosm right so instead of the individual activities that you are, you know, uh, like playing guitar and improvising or something, the kind of typical stuff that people associate flow state with, uh, you are integrating these triggers into the larger framework of your life so that your um, general uh, state of mind is flow at, to whatever extent is possible. And um, it's actually not that difficult to do if you have a mindfulness practice, for one thing, you know, because you have to have concentration and it helps to have a singular point of interest. Um, and so if you are very focused on this one track, which is your true will, your highest purpose, your, your you know, dream function on this planet, um, and you train yourself in mindfulness and then you have courage because you have confidence and you take risks and that's another flow state trigger. And so, um, you know, that's there's like 22 of them, but that's the idea uh of creating you know flow state and macro in your life um and you know marvelous things happen it is uh a, one of the paths to individuation um and the building of a bridge between the conscious and the subconscious mind which is the um catalyst for synchronicities and uh just generally the kind of transcendental states uh, that lead to expanded capacities of consciousness Um, yeah, so, uh, let's see, syncretic, hermetic, emetic, <laughs> I've covered everything but the emetic part, which means, uh, that it makes you vomit, um, and, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> no, it is true that a lot of people are discouraged by the idea of vomiting a lot on ayahuasca, and if you're any neophytes out there that still haven't tried it or are still on the fence, um, it uh, is kind of a pleasant vomit once you learn to embrace it and accept it. You don't fight it, uh, and you know that it is uh, in your best interest to expel those things that do not serve you onto the jungle floor, hopefully, optimally. You know, being in the Amazon is definitely the best way to experience um, these medicines. So um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it short and sign off now. Um, I'll be back probably tomorrow. Um, I appreciate every one of you guys spending this time with me. Please hit the like button, share, subscribe, support us on Patreon. Uh, and don't forget to shoot me an email if there's any way that I can be of service. Um, take care.